This is Auto Line This Week, the show that gets you inside the global automotive industry. Auto Line This Week partnered with the Consulate General of Canada in Detroit to produce this episode. Hi, I'm John McElroy, and welcome to Auto Line This Week. You know, starting a car company is a really hard thing to do. Even Elon Musk has admitted it's really hard to do. Today, we're going to be talking about Lordstown Motors. It's had its ups and downs, but we're going to get into the details of where it's headed. And that's because my special guest today is Edward Hightower. He is the president of Lordstown Motors. And Edward, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me. Well, thank you for having me, John. It's great to be back. As I noticed, lots of up and downs. Boy, you must have a cast iron stomach to be able to take what's going on there. But first question, real easy. When can you start building electric pickup trucks? Well, as we announced in our most recent earnings call, uh, we're on track to start commercial production, meaning vehicles we actually plan to sell in the third quarter of this year. And uh, based on our timing on when we receive final certification from CARB, FMBSS, uh, and um, uh, and EPA, uh, we expect those vehicles to go on sale by the fourth quarter of this year. So it's getting very close. Uh, it's been a very long road, uh, but we continue to build pre-production vehicles. Uh, we continue to test those pre uh, PPVs. And as you know, with any launch, uh, it, it's all about finding issues and resolving those issues, not just with the vehicle, but uh, with the supply chain. So uh, we're very excited to be getting very close uh, to, to getting our customers in these vehicles. Hey, wait a minute. You said you need EPA approval. This doesn't have an internal combustion engine in it. I thought EPA just measured, you know, emissions coming out. Why do you need approval for them from them for an electric truck? Yeah, I mean, there's there's uh, there's all sorts of certification, and uh, the vehicle has to has to show that we're meeting all of the local regulatory certification and homologation requirements for this for this market. So we will we will meet those, and uh, we're on track to do that. That's great. So go through a little, I don't want to get into too much detail here, but, sure. you know, uh, Lordstown Motors had the plan. <clears throat> it, it needed a, a partner to come in and help. Foxconn, the, the contract manufacturing company, uh, is there. Where, where does that all stand now? Do they own the plant? Do they own Lordstown? How, how's that all work? Yes. Well, no, great question. Uh, just uh, within the last week and a half, uh, we closed on our asset purchase agreement. So Foxconn now owns the Lordstown, Ohio facility. Uh, and we have a contract manufacturing agreement for Foxconn to do the assembly uh, of the endurance at the Lordstown plant. And uh, many of our employees are now transitioned to being Foxconn employees. Uh, Lordstown Motors, we still continue to exist as an OEM, but we're responsible for the design, engineering, industrialization, testing, uh, sourcing, certification, homologation of, of the endurance and other future products for our, uh, for our commercial fleet customers. So uh, that's, that's the structure. It's a more asset light business model. John, uh, it allows us to gain scale without having to fill that six and a half million square foot plant uh, all ourselves. And it really meets the ambitions of Foxconn, who, who after being successful in the consumer electronics business, has, has big ambitions in the electric vehicle space. So it was a, it's a great partnership um, that we've been working very hard to get to the point where we close these agreements. And uh, we're excited about the future to, to work together uh, on both of our EV ambitions. Yeah, I think that's a real smart way to go as a startup. Go asset light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let Foxconn own, uh, you know, all the the big industrial scale of things, but and, mm -hmm. and you guys just have them build trucks for you. But mm -hmm. Foxconn is also going to build electric cars for Fisker, uh, the pear model, as it's called. You know, pear like a fruit. Uh, and I know you, you just mentioned 6 million square feet. Man, that is a monstrously big facility. It's, I was there years facility. ago when, when GM okay. still ran it. But yes. uh, are you going to have the room or is Foxconn going to have the room to build trucks for Lordstown as well as cars for Fisker? Yes, that's the plan. I mean, that's, that's the vision is that multiple OEMs will be able to build vehicles or have vehicles built by Foxconn in that asset and within the four walls of the Lordstown plant. Uh, so obviously the, so the Lordstown Endurance, it's a full size 
full bev body on frame pickup truck and uh, but not every vehicle that will go into that plant will be off of that platform so other vehicles like the ones you mentioned and other oems coming into that plant uh will be will have their vehicles built off the uh the mih platform the mobility and harmony platform which is which which uh, foxconn has created and that common bill of process, if you will, that common manufacturing process, those common core components of the MIH platform will allow smaller OEMs, niche focused OEMs like ourselves and others uh, that are there to achieve that scale, again, without owning the entire asset themselves. Very interesting. So it's not going to be the same vehicle or the vehicles going down the same line. There'll be separate lines. Is- and is there going to be a separate body shop and paint shop for it, for the different well, this, companies there? Yeah, I, I, there's, there's not the need for, for multiple body shops and paint shops. There is a body shop. There is stamping. There is, there, there's a stamping facility. There's a body shop. There's a paint shop uh, at, at the Lordstown plant, in, as you would recall from when you were there, John. Um, but when you have a basic architecture that follows a similar bill of process, um, you're able to build multiple different variants uh, of that architecture uh, in, under the same under the same roof and you're able to achieve that scale um, uh, rather than having to do it alone. Yeah, very interesting on, on how you're all doing that. Get, uh, before you got to the company, Lordstown, I, I think the original plans was actually to have the truck in production last year, mm-hmm. which would have made it the first to the market with an electric pickup. Mm-hmm. Now Ford's out with the Lightning, Riven, Rivian's out with its uh, pickup truck, the R1T. Has Lordstown missed its window of opportunity here? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think the the market will be able to, um, there'll be far more demand than there'll be supply uh, for electric full-size pickups in the, in the, in the near term. Uh, and we're very proud of our truck. We're very proud of the, the handling. Um, the in-wheel hub motors gives the vehicle a, 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 lo- a, a very responsive, it's a very responsive uh, powertrain and driving experience. Uh, the wheel hub motors also allow us to have uh, the vehicle to be very maneuverable and uh, have exceptional handling and, and a, a quite tight turning radius as well. So we think there's a space for our product uh, uh, in the marketplace and uh, we're excited to get it out there. The customers uh, who have driven it are all very excited about it. And uh, we think they're going to love it once they're in it. So tell us about your customers. How many do you have? How many of these trucks do you think you can sell? So we haven't announced uh, uh, who our specific customers are, but we are starting with limited production in 2022. Uh, our first batch of vehicles, John, will be about 500 uh, in 2022, primarily because we're working to reduce the bill of material costs. Um, uh, we said in one of our earlier earnings calls is that our bill of material cost is materially higher than our selling price. Uh, so we have a number of uh, actions plan, uh, investments in hard tools uh, and VAVE projects or value analysis and value engineering projects that will allow us to reduce the cost of the vehicle without taking it away from the customer. But, but that will require additional investment uh, and time. So uh, as we launch the product, we're going to keep we're going to keep the volume at a uh, at at the at the smaller level that we said uh, just initially until we can implement all of those projects, and then we'll focus on scaling. Edward, what's the problem with uh, is it chips and and batteries? We know those are the chips are hard to find. Mm-hmm. Batteries are really expensive, and the price is going up because the raw materials. Is is that the real thing that you've got to overcome, or are there other issues with uh, well, components? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, we've we've had those challenges as well. Um, the the cost piece is is uh, as a as a startup, uh, I, we invested more in building many of the parts with uh, with with soft tools, as they would call it. Uh, that gives you that that's that's much lower investment cost, and uh, they tend to that's a much lower investment cost, but a higher material cost, a higher mm-hmm. piece cost. Mm-hmm. And when when we get to the point where we're you know when the vehicle is launched and we can make the investments in the hard tools, that's going to be that's going to drastically lower the cost to produce the vehicle with again without taking any content or taking any features away from the customers Mm -hmm. we have had some of those supply chain challenges but that has not necessarily been the key 
cost driver. It's really the, the soft tool to hard tool conversions that will help us drive the cost down. Um, you know, we have a great team that's focusing on managing the supply chain issues. We've had some challenges with steel and aluminum for our frame and, bo and body and our battery enclosure. Uh, like you mentioned, we've had some semiconductor challenges, you know, getting, getting chips as everyone else in the industry has, but we're managing those. Uh, our team is managing those and that's why we're, we're still projecting that we'll uh, start uh, commercial production in the third quarter of this year. How will Lordstown Motor retail these trucks then? I mean, you know, a Ford has dealerships all over the place to retail its uh, mm -hmm. Lightning pickup truck. How is Lordstown going to retail them and also provide uh, service and after sales uh, kind of uh, uh, work on the truck? Yes, well, we'll have, we'll have partners. We'll have partners for the service uh, of, of the truck that we've, uh, we've announced. Uh, but our sales, we're going to have a... We're, as we're commercial fleet focused, uh, don't expect to see a, a chain of Lordstown dealerships around around the country. Uh, we're going to have a few select strategic customers that will be the uh, that we're, we're targeting for our buyers of the first endurances. Customers that actually use the vehicle for work, uh, at customers that want to show an improvement in their uh, their carbon footprint, and uh, we think just from the initial feedback, we'll uh, we'll really love. Uh, uh, driving the truck and the attributes it has, both from a hardware and software standpoint. Uh, we've recently seen Rivian raise the price of his truck, I think by mm -hmm. $10,000 or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Others are saying it's going to have to raise it even more. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, where do you guys stand on the price of your truck and can you hold to that? Yes. Well, our price uh, that we've announced is approximately $63,500. Uh, that's our our launch price with uh, with an with an option package on it, so it's not a a stripped down vehicle. And uh, we're going to build that that uh, one configuration uh, for the uh, uh, for this first batch of vehicles that that we're we're focusing on. And and it's it's important for us to get out in the marketplace. Uh, you know, we do, we realize that we're. Uh, um, you know, you said it yourself. There's been a lot of ups and downs, and uh, we're showing that as a team, and we have a very strong team now, we're showing as a team that we could execute. Uh, we're showing that we could deliver the product. We're showing that we could deliver the relationship with, with Foxconn. And um, you know, the, the proof will be when we get the vehicles uh, out in the hands of our customers in the, in the fourth quarter of this year. Hey, you, you mentioned Hub Motors earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, for, the, for the audience, if they don't know, that's where the electric motor is built right into the wheel. Exactly. You, know, you don't have uh, motors inside the chassis and running shafts out to turn the wheels. It's built right into the wheel itself. H have you driven it? What's it like? I mean, I'm, I'm oh, intrigued yes. by this technology. Yes. Yeah. It's 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 a joy to drive, John. And and we know your studio is not very far from our R and D center, and uh, so we can't wait to get you in one. Um, but as you said, the the vehicle has has four motors. There's one in each wheel. Uh, so the, the torque is directly applied uh, to, uh, to the wheel and uh, it's about approximately 550 horsepower and um, it's very responsive. It's very, the, the, the truck feels very light on its feet and it's very responsive and agile on all, all road service surfaces. Uh, I was with the, the engineering team um, back a couple of months ago towards the end of, end of winter in northern Minnesota. And it was amazing how well the endurance handled on snow, uh, split mu surfaces. You know, one wheel on ice, one wheel on on uh, on the pavement, and uh, even on uh, uh, even on a, a frozen frozen bed of ice. Uh, the ability to control the torque to each wheel, uh, in addition to stability control system and the ABS system, it just makes it a very responsive and controlled uh, driving experience that uh, we think our customers are gonna, gonna really value uh, and, and enjoy. Who, who supplies the hub motors? Uh, we have a partnership with a company called uh, Elafe, uh, uh, who is the, uh, the original uh, uh, supplier of the, of the motors, but we are actually going to be building the motors uh, in the Lordstown plant. We have uh, a, a wheel hub motor line uh, that uh, will produce the We'll, we'll produce the vehicle, produce the motors uh, for all the vehicles that are built in the Lordstown plant. Uh, in addition, we still have the uh, uh, a battery module and pack line uh, in the plant to build the, build the batteries for endurance as well.
And you asked, do I drive it? Uh, yeah. yeah I, mean, I just wanted to touch on that point. Um, every every week, the uh, I'm I'm out with the team, uh, with the engineering team, driving the latest PPVs that were built uh, uh, in the particular week, and, and the latest software updates. So you may see us, John, over at the the Meyer on Haggerty and Eight Mile doing a DC fast charge or or a level two charge. Um, you or you you may see us somewhere on Grand River. So uh, we're out, and I I'm, I drive the, the the leadership team. Uh, and our engineering team, we're, we're in the vehicles all the time, uh, making sure that they're ready for our customers uh, to take delivery in the, in the fourth quarter. And of course, those locations you're talking about are, are not far from the studio right here. I'll keep my exactly. eye out for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the things about hub motors is, you know, by packaging everything in the wheels, man, you free up a lot of space potentially. Were your designers yes. able to take advantage of that and provide even more interior room in the, and 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 presumably carrying capacity in the bed. Yes, yeah, we we were, we were able to free up some space. Um, you know, not just in the in the uh, in the bed of the vehicle, but uh, in the interior and in the in the front as well. So, um, you know, we, many many con- commercial fleet customers rely on a, a toolbox for lockable storage inside the bed of the truck. Well, that takes up about twenty to twenty four inches of bed space you know we have a uh, a, a standard you know uh, bed but um you don't know you no longer have to add that toolbox for lockable storage because you could put those tools in the front uh of endurance so uh, we're very proud of that you know one of the questions i've always had about hub motors is they add a lot of weight at the wheels as you know mm-hmm. the engineers call unsprung weight weight yes. that's not yes. supported by the springs and mm-hmm. and that can adversely affect the handling of a car Yes. But of course, you're getting rid of uh, drive shafts and prop shafts and all that too. So, uh, how's that work out? How how does the, the the truck handle all that unsprung weight at each wheel? You know, as a as a uh, as an old chassis engineer, I had the same concern as well, John. So, I think your 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 question is is definitely valid. But when you look at um, the 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 mass of the vehicle in proportion to to the the unsprung, unsprung mass uh, of the wheel and the dynamics are just very sound uh it the the truck has very stable um it, it, it's very sound wheel control over over impacts on the road um the 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 roll is very limited with the center of uh, a center of gravity being so low in the in the truck and the roll center being high uh you don't feel uh, a, a lot of tip and roll as you're as you're as you're driving, um, and you know you you don't the the uh, the the team the the cha- our chassis team has just done a great job of managing the uh, additional unsprung mass um, uh, that are that are in our wheel hub motors. So it's you will you will uh, when you get the opportunity to drive it, you will see what exactly what I'm talking about. That's great. That's terrific. It's a breakthrough. I mean, you'll be the first ones th- that I'm aware of in production mm-hmm. with hub motors. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're very excited about that. Yeah. And, um, um, I, I, I you know, I, I can't say it enough. We can't wait to get customers in this, in this vehicle. So let's talk about future product. Cause you brought it up yes. yourself. I wasn't aware you're working on future products and <laughs> nobody likes to give away future products, but what can you tell us? Sure. Well, I mean, we've announced publicly that part of the transaction with Foxconn uh, was the formation of the MIH EV design joint venture in which in partnership with Foxconn and their MIH platform, which stands for Mobility and Harmony. Uh, it's, it's a basic vehicle architecture. It's a, it's a vehicle, electric vehicle architecture, hardware and software, software and hardware component set uh, on, on which they are going to uh, work with OEMs, not just Lordstown, to develop EVs that can be built off of that component set and out, out of the Lordstown, Ohio plant and potentially other Foxconn EV plants in other parts of the world. So as you know, John, by, um, by sharing the basic architecture, so that could be the motors, the pack, the front suspension, the rear suspension, the different modules, the inverter, um, Etc. Uh, by sharing all of those components, not just the the hard assets, but the but the engineering that goes into them, uh, companies are able to bring products to market faster, 
uh, at a lower cost and, and at a lower investment. So this is like a, a skateboard that anybody can use and put their body and interior on top of that, eh? Yeah, it's it, it, yeah that that that's that's a that's a simplified way of of, of saying it. it it's op- obviously um, uh, more integration that goes into that because you know you're determining what segments you're participating in, uh, what are those requirements from a from a um, vehicle performance standpoint, and from a space and packaging standpoint, and those are all the things that uh, uh, we'll be doing with our joint venture, uh, MIHEV Design uh, LLC. We will be developing those future products for our commercial fleet customers, Lordstown's commercial fleet customers. So the endurance will not be the end of our story. It's really the beginning of our story. Uh, And uh, there's the potential that we'll be developing MIH-based vehicles for other OEMs uh, as well. For other OEMs? Oh, now this is getting really interesting. So you're not just looking at future product for yourselves. You're looking at selling these uh, well, under contract with Foxconn for other o- o- OEMs. Well, that's what's that's the great thing about the partnership, John, is that uh, that's an aspiration of of uh, of Foxconn to to grow in the EV space, and we have a very capable team here at Lordstown, uh, uh, a capable uh, uh, team that can create vehicles from concept through launch. All of the design, engineering, testing, industrialization, sourcing, quality uh, quality engineering and quality management, taking parts all the way through PPAP, all of those, those capabilities we have uh, in our organization. So it's a great partnership to, to team up with Foxconn on creating those vehicles, not just for ourselves, uh, but for other OEMs. That, that's fascinating what you're saying there, mm-hmm. Edward. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you've really pivoted the company, right? I mean, it was just going to build electric pickup trucks. And now you've got this idea that you could actually manage entire programs for other automakers that want to get into uh, electrified commercial vehicles. Well, right. I mean, that was one of the things that that uh, uh, attracted many of the new leadership team to to the company is that this is that opportunity to to work with Foxconn on that on that ambition. Uh, as they were developing the plat- this platform, and um, yes, I mean the more the you know the more models you build, the more potential you have for scale, provided you uh, maintain the appropriate amount of commonality. And um, as you're as we're able to do that, we'll be uh, we'll be successful in the in the market. Have you been approached by any other automakers to have them do this? I can't speak about that. Good good okay. uh, good attempt, but um, that. That is, uh, that is what this partnership will give us the potential to do. And uh, can't wait to talk about it uh, at the appropriate time in the future. But no, no announcements at this point. Well, as you know, then the, the, the only uh, impediment is you got to raise more money, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's never easy. How are you going to yes. be able to go out and raise the money you need? Right. Well, you know, we, 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 uh, we believe that uh, the, the positive news that uh, of, of the the partnership between us and Foxconn, uh, the fact that we are going into production with the endurance and showing that you know as a team we can execute uh, the, as the market continues to develop, uh, we just think Lordstown, you know, the, we we show that we've turned the corner from some of the challenging challenges that we've had in the past, and uh, we we just. We feel that we're a, a, a more interesting and uh, investable story moving forward. Back to your electric pickup truck, the Endurance. Mm-hmm. You must be encouraged by, you know, Ford got, I think, 200,000 orders mm-hmm. for uh, its electric pickup truck, the Lightning. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. They thought they were going to sell 40,000. Then they doubled uh, that to 80,000. Then they doubled yep. it again, 160,000. Mm-hmm. I mean, it suggests that there is a lot of demand for electric trucks out there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, tra- um, pickup trucks right behind SUVs is the most popular segment uh, in the United States. And um, we see that creating a, a product that focuses, uh, that is a, that is a really a, a tool that focuses on c- customers that use the vehicle for work is a, a, a unique opportunity for us. And, um, we see that at, uh, uh, other opportunities in the commercial fleet segment uh, as well. So we're, we're really excited about the, the role we'll play uh, uh, in this market. 
So can you tell us, I mean, you know, uh, I look at Bright Drop with its electric van, Rivian's coming out with an electric van. Uh, are you hinting that maybe a van's the next product? No, I'm not. I'm not hinting. Uh, <laughs> no, like I said, no announcements. But uh, we we think, and and the the data shows that um, uh, you know the commercial the commercial market is expected to grow, uh, especially with the transition towards electrification. Uh, if you look at the you know, compound annual annual growth rates of of all commercial vehicles, whether they be pickups, vans chassis cabs, SUVs, what have you. I mean, those are some very strong CAGR numbers if you look, if you project it over the next decade or so. Um, many of these customers, many of these companies, uh, they're looking at improving their carbon footprints. Uh, they're looking at ESG goals. Uh, and, and quite frankly, they want to lower the total cost of ownership uh, because, you know, and, and our, part of our mission, our, our main mission is to help accelerate that transition towards electrification. So no better way to to do that, then focus on the vehicles that drive the most. Uh, the commercial vehicles, fleet vehicles, these are vehicles that are that don't sit in a parking spot for 95% of the, the time as a, as a traditional co uh, consumer vehicle will, 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 will may yeah. have uh, well, when, the, when you're at work or at home. But, but these are vehicles that are doing the most miles, so uh, uh, why not get them into on the electrification uh, uh, transition? Well, it's going to be fascinating to watch what you do with it. Mm -hmm. Edward Hightower, thanks so much for your time. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun watching Lordstown Motors. Okay. Thank you very much, John.